or button. All right, welcome everyone to the author world. I'm Peggy McCall and I'm delighted to be with you here for this hour. We're gonna to be together for three sessions in total, one hour today, one hour tomorrow, and one hour on Thursday. And yes, we are recording it. Uh, yes, Donna, <laughs> I just, I must have read your mind. Uh, we're recording it and we'll definitely have a replay for you as well so that you can uh, catch the replay a little bit later. Now we have one hour and you're going to find that that hour is going to go rather quickly. What we're going to be doing is some back and forth. I'm going to be asking you questions, asking you to type it into the chat box on the right hand side. And also what I want to encourage you is please only type the answers to the to the uh, questions that I'm asking in the chat box to, to just minimize the distractions because sometimes if there's people chatting and, and amongst each other, then it distracts from the content of our uh, time here together. Uh, so how many of you are already an author? Uh, just type in me or I am uh, if you're an author or there we go. Okay, good, good. So we have a number of authors that are here as well. I saw some familiar faces coming on as well. Okay, good. And out of those that are authors, how many of you are best-selling authors? Just type in the chat box. Uh, that you are a best-selling author, a best-selling, well, of course, Vladdy is. <laughs> Very good. Kayla is. Okay. All right. Just the yes answers I'm looking for. There we go. All right. Uh, so we've got, we've got Vladdy. We have Victoria. Okay, Victoria, uh, what type of best-selling author are you? Amazon? Oh, I like that answer, Eva. In my visions, I like that. Ilona, of course, yes-ish. Okay, I'm not sure what yes-ish. You either are or you're not. It's like you're either pregnant or you're not. Okay, Tanya says, I'm an Amazon international best-selling author. Okay, good. All right. Oh, in a group book. Okay, got it. All right, understand. Uh, Michelle definitely is, yes. All right, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to be doing this session over three parts, as you know, today is part one, and this the focus of today is making your book a bestseller. Uh, I'm going to go to my slides right now, but I, what I also want to encourage you to do is if you have questions relevant to today's subject and you'd like me to address them in today's session, uh, please uh, type in the chat box because uh, I'm definitely going to take some questions today. So today we're going to be covering off what does it mean to be a best-selling author, how to become a best-selling author, which builds lasting credibility. Tomorrow we're going to talk about the money earning side of it, although that will be blended in every single day. And then on Thursday, we'll talk about how to turn your book into a movie and navigate the Hollywood adaptation process as well. Now, what I want to say is we did some surveys, uh, we, that's the royal we, that's Roddy, who did the surveys, asking you, you know, some questions. And many of you answered those surveys, and we're grateful for that. Thank you very much. But in the answering of the surveys, uh, what we noticed is more people were interested in becoming a best-selling author than anything else. But what I want you to do is really open up your mind. We did have a percentage that said, yes, they're interested in earning millions. We did have a percentage of the people that are participating say, yes, they would be interested in having their book turn into a movie or a documentary or docu-series or a series of some sort. But just open up your mind, even if you're here and you've already become a best-selling author or you're already an author, open your mind up to what the possibilities are. It's very important that you do that. Not worrying about the how. We heard both Vladdy and Kayla talk about that. You don't have to know how. I can guide you in that regard to show you how to do those things. I will talk a little bit about my own uh, accomplishments as well, but only for the sake of showing you what I've done and what, what I've accomplished. But the most, uh, the best way for you to get real value out of this event is obviously being here live as you are. So I appreciate you guys for being here. And we're only on for an hour, so give this your undivided attention. Shut down your mail, turn off your phone, do not you know, go and do other things, just focus on this. And if you have questions, ask the questions. I'm gonna definitely take some questions and write some notes. But when we heard earlier, when Vladdy and Kayla, if you were on early, if you were on at the beginning of this call, they both talked about being best-selling authors, but they followed through. That's the difference. It's the follow through that makes the difference. Now, that may seem like so obvious to you, but it's amazing how many people want the desire they would love to become 
these uh, accomplishments and do become a best-selling author, perhaps even New York Times, but yet they don't follow through. And it takes an enormous amount of uh, effort, um, but the rewards are great. I can absolutely guarantee you that. I really believe that writing my first book was the best decision I made at that time in my career. And of course, I'm 23 books in as of today. So what I want to do is I want to throw out the trash. Like garbage is something that we dispose of because we don't need it anymore. It doesn't serve us. It has no value. So what is the trash as it relates to mindset and being an author that you don't have what it takes? You know, a lot of people believe that. I certainly believe that when I was first starting out, I made the decision to write a book. And I remember telling my parents and they thought it was a joke, like you're going to write a book. I didn't need their approval, wasn't looking for their approval, but it wasn't necessarily their uh, rejection of the idea that was the greatest challenge. It was my own rejection of the idea, the own my own belief in my own mind. Now, what I want to ask you guys is how many of you can relate to that? Oh, hold it. There we go. Stop share. That's what I wanted to do. How many of you can relate to thoughts that your content wouldn't be good enough? you're not good enough, who would want to read a book that you would write, or even if you did write one, that the potential for that book to become a world phenomenon, like a, a success, a New York Times bestseller, that you, um, you know, don't have it in you to do it. How many have that belief? Good. Thank you for the honesty. I really appreciate that. That was me. That was absolutely me. And Vladdy mentioned that as well. She said that in the beginning, before we actually turned on the recording, she said that, you know, she didn't have the belief that she could even become an author, never mind write a great book, but yet she's written several now and released several. And so a huge part of success in any field, whether it's being an author or being an entrepreneur or running a business or doing anything requires the right mindset. You absolutely must have the right mindset for success. And a big part of that is creating the identity of a successful author. So for those of you that are here and your desire is to be a best-selling author, I'm going to give you two suggestions. One, write as if you already are a best-selling author and to believe that that is who you already are. You have to believe in yourself more than anyone. You've got to really believe it. And if that belief's not there, that's okay, because you can build it. It's like a muscle that can be built over time through impressions, through repetition of really choosing to believe in that. And so sometimes it's just a matter of really grabbing hold of that and saying, okay, I'm going to buy into your belief, even though you may not have that belief yourself, and proceed because it is all about taking action. Both Vladdy and Kayla, two authors that are on my team, talked about it. That's what they both did. They took action, even though it might not have been perfect. Like I noticed earlier when we got on the call, there's a couple people that I'll probably mention during this call because I noticed that they're here. And one of the, the individuals that I want to mention is a lady by the name of Wendy. Now, I was very blessed to meet Wendy this year in January, in fact. And one of the things she told me is that she was interested in writing a book about her own life story. And yet I suspect, I mean, Wendy's here and she can speak for herself, but I suspect she probably had some limiting beliefs that were in her mind as well. But in Wendy's case, she decided to work with me privately. So she's in private mentoring with me right now. And she happens to live here in the city of Ottawa, which is wonderful. And so we invested some time together and she got on with the work and now she's on a roll. I mean, now she's really, you know, discovered that she does have this uh, ability and talent within her to write. Now, everybody does. If you can communicate with me in the language, English, even if it's not your first language, because Vladdy just said it's not her first language, you can write a book. Nowadays with AI, and frankly, we have an entire section in our author program now all dedicated to how to use AI honestly, authentically, legally to help you with your book, AI can help you tremendously, not only with the outline of your book, but with doing some edits, some suggestions, giving you some uh, uh, inclusions that you could put in your book as well. So it's uh, much, much easier now than it's ever been to actually complete a book. And as Roddy had mentioned before we actually started the event today, he made a kind of like a humorous remark that 
you know, Peggy's written 23 books and she may be uh, finishing her 24th before the day is out. I know that that is possible. I absolutely know it's possible because I wrote a book in a day. I'm not suggesting that you go and write a book in a day, but it can be done if that was something that you wanted. You just need the right guidance in order to do it. So really what I'm talking about is getting out of your own way. Like if you've been thinking about writing a book and maybe it's been a while and you just haven't really gotten to it, or maybe you wrote that first book and you've been thinking about writing the next book and just hasn't haven't gotten around to it. I have found that the best way to do it is set a date for completion. Now, I don't think you need to set a date for 2025 or seven or some other number way, way, way down the road. You can get it done relatively quickly. Just recently, I started working with a lovely author from a lovely lady who's going to be an author. She's not an author yet uh, from Australia. We're working in private mentoring. In fact, I was on a call with her this morning at 7 a.m. And um, the first question I asked her is, when do you intend on you know, completing your book or when would you love to complete your book? And she said that she'd love to get her book completed by Christmas time, by Christmas time. So very doable. And it's like that expression, a very simple expression, work will expand to the time allotted. I'm working on my 24th book right now. This book I actually did sell to a publisher. I got a two book deal and they have requested that I submit the book edited to them by the end of the first week in December. And that will absolutely be done. All right, Michelle Snyder is committed to February, 2025 for her 16th book. Well, look at her, she's on a roll as well. So Eva's asking the question, how long was the book you wrote in a day? I'll pull it off my bookshelf for you so I can show you. This is the book. This is the book that I wrote in a day. And it is, it's a book on internet marketing. So it's probably a little outdated. So I'm not going to recommend that you go and buy it, but it's called 99 Things You Wish You Knew Before Marketing on the Internet. So a publisher had asked me to write this book and I had agreed and they didn't give me a due date. And like many people who don't have a due date, nothing was being done. So it wasn't until they called me and said, we'd like you to submit this book by the 15th of November. And I got that message at the end of October when I was traveling, I was flying out West, I was on a business trip and I thought, well, I better get down to work. And so on the first weekend in November, I told my husband, I said, I'm going to have to work on a book this weekend. He said, well, I've invited my relatives to come for the weekend. Well, that's a challenge because I do the cooking in our house. And uh, and so I had to get the groceries and get the meal planned and prepped. And so they were arriving Saturday around noon. So Saturday morning, I just did an outline. And then Sunday morning, I got up at 3 a.m. Now, I don't normally get up at 3 a.m. I woke up at 3. I felt refreshed. And I went into my office and closed the door. And I just made a decision. And the decision was that I'm going to write a chapter in an hour. I'm going to write a chapter an hour. And I had never done that before. I didn't even know if it could be done. But it's like when you give yourself a command, you can follow it. So I gave myself a command. You're going to write a chapter an hour. And that's what I did. By 4 a.m., I had the first chapter. By 5 a.m., I had the second chapter. So I just kept going and going. I called my sister, Judy, and I said, would you be willing to come, come over and look at the stuff that I'm writing and give me feedback while I'm writing the next chapter so I can go in and fix what I'd already written? And she said, yes. I also lined up an editor so that they could edit the book on the Monday because I told them, I said, I'll have it to you by tonight. By midnight tonight, I'll have the book to you. Again, I made commitments. I didn't know if I was going to do it, but I got on with the work and I just really disciplined myself. Everybody has the ability to laser focus in. Now, sometimes when you have somebody there who's giving you the guidance or you're working with someone, you could maybe do it in different increments of time, but it's absolutely possible to do it in a relatively short period of time. How many of you would like to do your book quickly? Yes. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. I love it. All right. You've heard the expression, the universe loves speed. Yeah, absolutely. You can do it quickly. You do not have to, it does not have to take a long period of time. There's also, um, <laughs> there's also, you know, many reasons for doing a book. You know, I see some of the people that are on here, you know, are in different fields and endeavors. You know, some are running their own business. Some are entrepreneurs. Some people here are coaches, etc. There's no try, by the way. There's only do. We don't try here. We only do. <laughs> and what I found is that, you know, you could write the book for different reasons. 
you know, you could write a book because you want it to be a gift that you're giving to people. You you can write a book because you want to have it as a lead generator for your business to build your following. You could write a book that could be used as a sales tool. And uh, that could be another re- one of the reasons why you write a book. So getting a book done, it doesn't have to be a long book or quite an in-depth book, but you could certainly... Uh, write a book, like let's say a 15,000 word book, and I get into the number of words, et cetera, and the different types of books, et cetera, in my program. But you could certainly do that. But this is so important, this whole mindset piece of creating success as an author. You have to see yourself as a successful offer, I would suggest before you even begin. And if you've begun, that's okay too. Do it now. Do it now. See yourself as a successful author now. So why would anyone write a book? Like, what are your reasons for writing a book? Type it in the chat box. Why are you writing a book? What are are your reasons for writing writing a book? Uh, Many people have different reasons. You know, some people write a book because they want to leave a legacy. Some people are writing a book because they want to share their passion and expertise, like Michelle. Pam, inspire people. I love that. Visibility, absolutely. To help others share your knowledge. There we go. Good reasons. Share knowledge in the industry. Inspire and uplift. I love that. I want to leave a tough trip for others to follow. I want to leave a tough trip for other. I'm not sure I understand that one, but maybe you can expand on that if you feel like it. Uh, all right. Uh, so within a year would be quickly for me. I am a wordsmith that writes listening to message adventure, do middle class ideas come quickly, but wording needs to convey right inspire children. Uh, okay, uh, to make a contribution to the growth, put out my experience. Yeah, good. I like that. Sharing my knowledge, says Rhea. Perfect. Felt called to write and give what I once received. I love that, Tanya. That's beautiful. Leave a legacy, inspire others. I feel I have something to say. You sure do, Joan. Joan's already done a book. She She's a, a realtor. She's a real estate investor. And she did already release release a book. I love to write. Oh, I love that, Stephanie. That's beautiful. And what a great belief that is to have. I love to write. I love to write. Can you imagine if you're an author and you didn't love to write, how challenging that would be? (laughs) Right? Just fall in love with writing. That's beautiful. Okay, Paula, share my story, passion, help others, make money. Yahoo, Paula, you're in the right place. To help people, says Muriel. Muriel has already done a book. I'm happy to see you here as well. Begun to write a book with AI and I'm already five chapters in. I want to share my passion. Beautiful. Okay, I have stories to tell and I want to teach and to make money. Beautiful. Totally, you are in the right place. I have several novel ideas. I want to get them into the universe. Beautiful, Phil. And a perfect setup for movies too, right? Like novels, anyone that's writing a novel or interested in writing a novel. Want to help others move beyond their walls, share information, expand their world, establish credibility, legacy, share knowledge, being able to tell people I wrote a book. It's wonderful. Marty said that. Yes, that's true. It's like you get on an airplane, you're sitting beside somebody. What do you do? I'm an author. Oh, what did you write? And if you happen to be a coach as well, or a mentor, or you're running a business, that it's a natural leading to other things as well. Movie production says Carrie. Okay, good, good. I like that uh, Rhea's writing a book for children on social emotional learning skills for their well being. To share ideas says Billionaire Pete. That's wonderful. Patricia Inspire Legacy. Okay, well, we got a lot of messages there. And I, I love that you already know why. It's so important to understand your reason why. I have to write. It's in me, says Allison. Beautiful. I love it. Eva, heal trauma. Absolutely. You know, writing your own book can be a great healing experience. One of the best things that you can do for you is help another. And that's why writing books, that's why I wrote my first book was to help another. And it was the best thing that I ever did because I grew in the experience, right? I grew from collecting those ideas and putting them down on paper and then sharing them with others. And it's a very healing and a very valuable thing for you to do for yourself. Even if nobody ever read your book, it's such a smart thing to do, such a valuable thing to do. So you might have come here because you do desire to become a best-selling author, and that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, Or you want to build credibility for your personal or business brand, or perhaps both, and you can certainly do those things. It might be because you'd love to create additional income streams, 
or maybe you hadn't even thought of that, but I certainly going to encourage you. And it's something that I absolutely am very passionate about and love to teach is how to create those income streams. But knowing that before you write is a very valuable thing to do as well, even if you're looking to write fiction. Uh, or you're here because you'd love to turn your book into a movie or a documentary or a series or do something in entertainment. Uh, that could be the reason. Or you want to help people. And we saw that as a response in a lot of the questions that were asked earlier or in the response to the question that was asked earlier. Why? Why do you want to write that book? Because you'd like to help people. And a book could certainly uh, accomplish that. I have folder. I have a folder on my uh, laptop here on my computer and it's what I call my feel good file and in there are emails that I've received from either clients of mine people that have attended events or people that have written books and they send in their messages about how it changed their life never mind the people that they you know impacted as well but then there's those emails or messages that you receive that are from people that have read your work and tell you that you know, it really made a positive difference in their life as well. Uh, for example, my series, uh, Savvy Wisdom, which is based on my real life, it's a trilogy and it's my, uh, uh, it's the third, uh, or it's a, it's, uh, it's the 19th, 20th and 21st book that I wrote that is being made into a movie. It's right here behind me on my uh, bookshelf. And that is, those are written as fiction books, but they are based on my life. And the amount of feedback that I've received for that has been tremendous. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate that. Uh, from all ages, you know, it's really become a four quadrant book, which is men, women, boys, girls, young, young people as well, because the book starts with a young lady who is really struggling. You know, she's struggling emotionally. And I know that is a challenge for many, many people in the world. And a lot of people really, uh, really resonate it, uh, re resonate with it. Eve is asking the question, do you take uh, negative criticism personally? Um, are you talking about me personally? Or, <laughs> uh, you know, I think it depends. You know, one, one time, I like the question because I think it's an important question. I remember one time I was speaking at a, um, uh, I was speaking at a conference in San Diego and I was in what they call the speaker room. And this was a, a Hay House event. And so uh, Reed Tracy, who runs Hay House, had put this event together. And Louise Hay was there and Wayne Dyer and Greg Braden and many of their other authors. They published four of my books. And we're in the speaker room and Greg and Wayne, who were both clients of mine, by the way, I, I worked with uh, both Greg Braden and Wayne Dyer on their books, uh, making them bestsellers. And we're in the room and um, I think it was Greg asked Wayne the question, very similar to that question, like, do you ever look at the reviews, those negative reviews that are on Amazon, right? Because it's free for anybody to write anything that they want. You know, they don't like your book and they think it's garbage or whatever. They're going to go on there and it's free speech world. So they're going to they're going to say so. And so Greg asked Wayne, like, how do you deal with those? And, you know, when there's criticism. And Wayne said, I don't look at it. I just don't give it any energy um, because the truth is there will be negative energy. There will be. And the higher you rise, the more it's going to happen. And that was something that I learned from my friend, Mark Victor Hansen, who was the co-author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul books. He said, the higher you rise, the more people will throw stones at you. Just the way it is in the world. If you're sensitive, don't look at it, <laughs> but just let it go, right? Let it go. Like I remember um, one time a, a client of mine had contacted me and she was all upset about a negative review that was written about her book. And I had to remind her about the 223 positive reviews that were written about her book. You know, why are you focusing on that one, <laughs> right? You know, like, let it go. You cannot please all the people all the time. You cannot please all the people all the time. And, I, and it's not for everyone. And I remember one time hearing this uh, statement, you could give someone a million dollars and they'll probably complain that they don't know what to do with it or, you know, right? Like there's just people that are in the world that are like that. It's just the way it is. So you got to develop a water off the duck's back. Let it go. Just let it go. Do your best is what I would suggest. Like create your best work that you're bringing out to the world. When you know in your heart that you're genuine, 
that you're creating something to help another, whether it's to inspire or to educate, then great, you know, good on you. Then that's, that's fantastic. Like if you know authentically in your heart that your intentions were only good, then that's all you have to think about. That's right. Peggy Hoover wrote, everyone has their own paradigms. What people think of you is none of your business. That's right, Peggy. She knows that very well as well, because she's a great student of success and probably read that book that Bob Proctor mentioned, Not you know, what you think of me is none of my business, which has a great title and a great message. Just like the book, uh, Feel the Fear and Go For It Anyway, right? Great message in the title. And uh, speaking of titles, you know, sometimes having a great title can be enough to get a book to take off, um, by the way. But both of those ladies, um, both of those ladies that I mentioned, Susan Jeffers, who wrote Feel the Fear and Go For It Anyway, as well as uh, What You Think of Me is None of My Business, Terry Cole Whitaker. I mean, they made a difference in the world. And here we are. I, I believe Terry Cole's book was written many, many decades ago. And we just finished studying that a few months ago in our Club Achieve study program. Uh, Feel the Fear and Go For It Anyway was written, I think, back in the 80s. That's when I got a copy of it. It's on my bookshelf right behind me. And, uh, you know, a book that is still around. You know, there's books that I have on my bookshelf. The authors have passed on, but yet their legacy is there. Bob Proctor's books are on my bookshelf. Wayne Dyer's books are on my bookshelf. There's a lot of people that have passed on. Uh, Earl Nightingale, <coughs> excuse me, Napoleon Hill, Neville Goddard, uh, Ralph Waldo Trine. We're, we're studying this book in our Club Achieve program. This book was written in 1897. So this is an example of the, the legacy that you can potentially uh, leave by, you know, taking your thoughts out of your mind or your ideas out of your imagination. Yeah, there we go. Peggy Hoover, uh, Louise Hay and Florence Scovel Shin and putting them down in paper. And as I said, whether it's to inspire or to educate, I love that. Rhea says, I'd love to leave a legacy for children and educators. You know, the woman that I was chatting with this morning, I'm pretty sure she's probably not on right now because it's the middle of the night for her. Uh, and she's a new client that I'm working with in a private mentoring capacity. And she was telling me about her own life and her own journey and how she had left uh, her country in uh Europe and, and became a, a refugee and how she left with nothing in her pocket and, you know, with her two little girls and moved to another country, not even speaking the language. I remember working with a lovely woman from uh, Cambodia originally, but she's living in New Zealand now and English was not her first language. She didn't even know where to start. And I was working with her. She was also a private client. And she got her book done and just felt so incredibly proud that she was able to share that story of her struggles and her life and the challenges uh, that she had gone through. And that's authentically hers. You see, you, you could write about a topic that's very, very popular and released out there in the world. And today, like this year, there will be between 3 million and 4 million books released in the world, 3 million to 4 million books released in the world. That's how many books are being released. When I started writing back in 2002, there were about 250,000 books released a year. So it's obviously gone way up like, significantly, which is great. I mean, it's so much easier nowadays to write a book than it was when I started in 2002. Print on demand wasn't available. You know, I self-published my first three books, but then I sold the rights to my third book to a publishing house. And then I went with a publishing house for a while. I've been with four publishing houses over the years. I've self-published books. I've created books as eBooks just to give away as lead generators. I have books in all formats, large uh, font, uh, hardcover, trade paperback, audio book, Kindle book. Um, many, many different formats and have uh, books that are being optioned to do a movie as well. So all of this is uh, all my book making a million in a month. Is that the one I created a kid's Bible inspired me? Thank you. Oh, wonderful. In fact, uh, Mast Mystic, who I believe is from India, that book, um, Bob Proctor and I did a program years ago called Making a Million Look Small. I'm going to be writing that book. We had talked about it. It was my idea to do it uh, back in 2012, uh, but we never acted on it. And I actually sold the rights to a publishing house. So that will be my 25th book. Eva's asking me a question here. What book are you most proud of and why? 
That's an easy question. You know, it's if any of you are parents and you have more than one child, which I know some of you do, Vladdy has a couple children, Kayla has a couple children, and we asked you, which one's your favorite? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you'd have a hard time answering that one. But some days Joshua might be the favorite. Another day Elizabeth might be the favorite. Like it could go like that. And I find sometimes with books, oh yeah, Bill has four children. Oh, Eva says I have a favorite. Okay. All three says Monica. Okay, good. Depends on the moment. Um, but you know, when I think about my books and, and they're, you know, they're on the shelf here behind me and the lower shelf are translations of my books. You know, they're all my babies. They're my babies, you know, and anyone who's been an author, you realize that your books become like your babies. And the first time you you hold your book, here's a book that uh, 80, who's on the call right now, wrote. And the first time you hold your book, I'm not even sure 80 has held her book yet. She just released this a couple of days ago and I ordered a copy. She told me on, I think it was Sunday when I talked to her, she said I was the first one to have a copy of her book. Uh, let me see if I can uh, bring 80 into the spotlight here. See, oh, look at you. You're looking so beautiful. You know, this is spontaneous. This was not planned. So 80, <laughs> thank you for letting me bring you into the spotlight. Of course. Have you held a copy of your baby yet? Not, not yet. No. Okay. Am I muted? No, you're unmuted. Yeah, no, I haven't held a copy yet. Yet, yet of, right. of the book. But you're already in love, right? You're already in love with your oh, baby. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And how does it feel knowing that someone else is holding your baby for the first time? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a beautiful thing to schedule something and to follow through with it. Just, you know, it you know, it keeps you going to the next step and the next step. So you continue to grow. So I think that's why, you know, the way you have things set up where people meet with you, it just, it takes you to the next place. I mm -hmm. mean, the Hollywood Manifest is pretty a pretty amazing event. And if I didn't have that scheduled, I probably wouldn't have had that book ready. Wow. Well, good for you. So uh, 80 is looking to have that her book made into a movie, which we met with some producers. They're very interested in her story. Her book is just being released. In fact, she's going to make some more changes and then and then release it a little bit later. So uh, congratulations, Adi. I'm so happy that you're here. I think it's quite impressive in your whole story of your success. And I know this is just the beginning. It really Absolutely. is the beginning. Yeah, good for you. Thank you so much. Of course. I appreciate you. Okay, so to answer the question, I didn't forget the question was, what is my favorite book? I'd have to say it's Savvy Wisdom. And uh, Savvy Wisdom is the one that's sitting in the middle of my uh, bookshelf there. And the reason why I'd say it's my favorite book is because it is it is a fiction book, but it is based on my life and meeting Bob Proctor and meeting Bob Proctor at a time that was very influential and instrumental. Uh, I was suicidal at the time I met him. And, you know, I I would say to Bob from time to time, you saved my life. And he goes, no, you, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. And if any of you knew Bob, you know him because that's the way he would be. No, I didn't. You saved your own life. And Bob was like that because he would say, if I have to take credit for your successes, then I have to take credit for your failures as well. And he's absolutely right about that. But this book was uh, an inspiration that happened uh, just a few years ago when the idea popped in my consciousness to write a fiction book. And how many of you have thought about writing a fiction book, but don't believe that you have it in you to do it? How many of you have had the thought of writing a fiction book, but don't believe you have it in you to do it? Just type in the chat box, just honestly. Okay. All right. Well, that was me. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't believe that I could uh, write a fiction book. It was something that I had studied writing fiction. I was teaching writing fiction as well as nonfiction. I'd worked with many, all Victoria's only written fiction. I worked with many fiction authors, many fiction authors, helping them to become bestsellers uh, as well as nonfiction authors. And so when the idea popped in my consciousness, I just asked myself, do I want to? And it's as simple as that. You just ask yourself that question. Same thing with being a bestselling author. Do you want it? Is that something that you would love? And if so, make a committed decision. So when I asked the question, do I want to? The answer was yes. You know, I had clients that had made their, I had another private mentoring client uh, by the name of Robert Pascuzzi or Bobby P as I call him. He's become a friend now. And Bobby P 
came to my home to work with me privately. And he wanted to write a book about something that had happened in his life. And he didn't know where to begin. And so we got started and he wrote, released and made his book an international bestseller called The Ravine. It's a fiction book and it actually was made into a movie. Um, it was, uh, when did we film it? We filmed it around, I think, 2019. I say we, cause I got to be an extra in one of the scenes. They were shooting in New Orleans. I'd never been in New Orleans. I thought, great reason to go, let's go. For my clients, uh, you know, uh, filming of his book. And so he actually had his book made into a movie. So I thought, wow, I'd love that too. And what I did was I asked myself this question, and I think this is a, uh, oh, Paula, a good question. I'm going to answer that next. I think this is a good question for all of you to ask yourself. What do I need to believe in order for this to be successful? What do I need to believe in order for this to be successful? So let's think of 80, okay? 80 just wrote her book, Starter Husband. And what does she need to believe to see this be a success? For it to be on the New York Times bestseller list, for it to become a classic, a movie that's wildly successful. What do you need to believe? Thank you, Kim, for writing that down. I really appreciate you. Yeah, Caroline, uh, I would... Uh, I would like to work on my courage. So you need to believe that you have the courage to do it. How about that? That it will help as many people as well, that you've got the sales. You need to believe in yourself. Absolutely. That it's possible. Yes. And so this was a question I asked myself. What do I need to believe in order to write a great fiction book? I need to believe I can do it. I need to believe it's great. I need to believe it's easy. And I need to believe it's already a success. Those were the things that I chose to believe in. And then what I did was I, I followed my own advice. I set a date for completion. And the date I set for completion was 10 days later. Now, if you looked at my agenda, you'll see it's pretty full. I work with clients. I mentioned I was on a call this morning at 7 a.m. with one of my private clients. I teach classes. I'm preparing for webinars. I'm writing. I'm also working on my doctorate right now, too. I'm a busy girl. And so when I set you know, my objectives, I go into my agenda and I block off the time to do it. Like I'm working on my 24th book right now. If you look at my agenda, you'll see periods of time that are blocked off where I'm writing, right? Just dedicated on writing. And what I do is I let my husband know and I close my office door and I come in here and I just shut everything off. The phone's on vibrate, email is closed and I focus, but I get into the spirit of the writing first. Like I don't sit down going, oh, this is going to be hard or I'm never going to be able to get this done. I sit down with the intention that this is going to be fun. The words are going to flow. It's going to be great. And let's rock and roll. Now, also, the thing to keep in mind for those of you that are haven't started writing or maybe in the writing process, you want to write as if you're communicating with a reader. All right, because that's who you're writing for. You're writing for a reader. So you have to imagine that reader is reading your book and they're loving it, right? So what would grab their attention, what would keep their attention, and what would cause them to want to flip the pages and keep going and going and going? In fact, when Adie and I had a conversation on Sunday, she was telling me that she was reading a book uh, while we were in LA last week and she was saying, you know, it was good, but she found that her attention, she was losing her attention. And so because it was written by someone she knew, she, you know, stuck with it, but she did find that, you know, probably she would have closed the closed the cover and just put it aside. And she said, when I read your Savvy Wisdom book, I couldn't stop reading. Like it was just, and that's what I've heard from more people than enough. People telling me, page turner, couldn't stop, read it in one sitting, et cetera. So this is the way you want to write. You want to write something that's really captivating. And if you think it's boring, it probably is, <laughs> okay? Just use your common sense as you're writing. So the question was asked a moment ago, did Bob read all of the Savvy books? Well, Bob actually passed away as I was finishing Savvy Wisdom 2. And since Bob has passed away, you probably already know the ending to Savvy Wisdom 2. Spoiler alert, <laughs> you know, Savvy passes away. And I had actually, I was working on it while Bob was sick. And even in January, I have texts from Bob and uh, we were going back and forth because he knew I was writing Savvy Wisdom too. And he just said, you know, he had read some of it. It wasn't finished yet. And he just said, keep going. Like, this is you in print. That's what he said. This is you in print. 
keep going. It's great. And um, and he loved. He was madly in love with the with the uh, the Savvy Wisdom series. In fact, I have a uh, oh, it's in my magical creation box. I have a page that I printed of texts that Bob had sent me about the Savvy Wisdom series and just how much that he loved it and how he absolutely believed that it was going to be massively successful. And so um, that was, uh, so they had the short, long answer to the question is Savvy Wisdom is definitely my favorite, but madly in love with all of them. They're all like, I have, you know, a lot of people con contacting me about different books. And I mentioned earlier today, I was on another call and I was talking about writing my next book. 24th book is called The Moment of Creation. And I was telling uh, when we were on our general open Q&A call and, and I think it was Tootie was on that call and asking questions about, you know, what do you own as far as the rights of your book? If you sell the rights to publishers, et cetera. And, and we we're talking about that process. Uh, yeah, Tootie is here right now. And um, I was saying that my intention is to make uh, the, mo the moment of creation my best book ever. And that's really what you want to do is you want to give it your best. Absolutely give it your best. Like I wrote Your Destiny Switch, which so far has been, you know, one of my biggest books, the New York Times bestseller. That that particular book is in 30 some odd languages. I wrote that in 2006. That was a long time ago. That's 18 years ago. Peggy's a different person today than what who she was 18 years ago. I've grown. I study every day. I've gone through some incredible, wonderful life changing challenges since that time as well. So what, what you're going to find for those of you that are fairly new to this book writing adventure is you're going to find it becomes like an addiction, <laughs> right, Vladdy? You know, you write one, then you're going to write the next one, then you're going to write the next one, then you're going to write the next one. And and uh, in fact, uh, when we were in uh, Hollywood last week, 80, you know, she's she's a very positive person. You guys just met her for a few minutes. And I was saying, oh, I'm totally seeing a nonfiction book for you, too you know, based on your own philosophy, because she's a brilliant woman, self-made, created tremendous success, even though she went through, you know, unbelievable challenges in her life. But she's got some strategies and ideas of what she's gone through that could really help someone else, really help another. It's just such a rewarding, uh, rewarding uh, career as well. Yeah, she doesn't want anyone buying the book just yet. Did you take it down off Amazon yet, 80? Yeah, she did. Okay. It's going to be, she's just going to make some changes and bring it, bring it out uh, again. Okay, let's keep going. And Ronnie, if I miss any questions, if you can grab them for me so I can get to them in a few minutes. So where's the opportunity? It, this is a, a, a trillion dollar, it's a dollar, dollar industry. Trillion dollar industry is really a billion. No, it's not a trillion, Peggy. It's a billion, billion dollar industry. Um, the self-help industry, the growth industry, personal development industry, and there are many authors that have earned hundreds of millions of dollars, either writing fiction, many in the fiction industry have earned hundreds of millions, but some nonfiction have earned uh, like significant amounts of money as well. But the opportunity is for you to go anywhere that you want. So you want to be in the right environment for success. There's a common quote that says, put yourself into the environment that's conducive for your success. What's that? Well, when you're surrounded by other successful people like we are right here, right now with everybody that's on this webinar, where you're getting the guidance that you need as well from somebody who's been there and done that. So these are some of my own accomplishments. You know, I have 23 books out in the world. I've written both fiction and nonfiction. Yes, I'm an international bestselling author and a New York Times bestselling author. I've had many contracts been paid significant uh, amounts of money with the advances from publishers and earnings from publishers. I've generated millions of dollars in revenue and personally earned millions of dollars as income, my own income. And I have books that are in almost 40 languages, last time I counted, and book sales in over 100 countries. And I now have a trilogy option to be made into a motion picture. And I don't say it because I'm bragging. In fact, this would probably have seemed very surreal to me about 20 years ago, um, but it's happened. And the, the reason why it's happened is in spite of fear, despite being concerned about what anybody else is think, I, thinks, I went for it anyway. And that's what you wanna do because you never know what kind of a difference you can make in someone's life, whether it's to entertain them or educate them inspire them, uh, whatever it happens to be. So a best-selling author is somebody that has sold more books than anyone else, right? But you can get into Amazon. They have categories. 
They have subcategories. They rank their sales every hour. You can go on Amazon at any time and you can see what are the best selling books at that time. You could go back tomorrow and it could be different. It could change. And the reason is because Amazon updates their sales hourly. Okay, hourly on all of the sites in each site, amazon.com, which is in United States of America, or amazon.co.uk or Amazon in Australia or Amazon in Canada or Amazon in India or Amazon in Italy or wherever in the world uh, that you're buying books, they each have their own bestseller list. So is there a possibility that you could be a bestseller in your own country? Sure. Is it a, is it a possibility that you could become a bestseller in a category in your own country and a category in another country and then become an international bestseller? Yes. Does it mean that you've sold truckloads of books? No, not necessarily. You can sell some books, but is it still worthwhile to do it? Yes. Why? Credibility. But I would say the bestseller list to go for, if you really want to earn a credibility as an author, is the New York Times. The New York Times is what's known as the epitome of success for authors. Hence the reason why I called my author program Epitome Author is yes, I teach you how to write your book, how to publish your book, fiction, nonfiction, how to extend beyond the book into revenue sources, how to make it a bestseller, how to have your book uh, you know, converted into other revenue sources. All of that is, is something that I cover, but it really is the New York Times is the one that's more world renowned and for those of you that don't live in the United States, the good news is you don't have to live in the United States to make your book a New York Times bestseller. I don't live in the United States. I live in Canada. I'm a Canadian and I am a New York Times bestselling author. So it doesn't matter uh, where you live. Um, you can live anywhere. What matters, though, is is your book being sold in the United States, which means Amazon.com or there are other sellers as well. There are others. Um, there are other uh, sources that report to the New York Times. Other online resources, mm -hmm. Barnes and Noble, as an as an example, uh, is another source for um, selling your books in the United States. So what the New York Times does is they get sales reports every week for for book sales. Now there's a strategy to actually create this accomplishment. And that is all authentic. I do not teach people how to buy their way on the list. I do not teach people how to manipulate sales. What I do is I teach people how to market their books to real buyers. Why do you wanna do that? Because you wanna create word of mouth. Word of mouth is still the absolute best way for any book to become wildly successful. Now, word of mouth today is a little different to what it was 100 years ago. Word of mouth today could be a podcaster talking about your book. Word of mouth today could be an influencer writing about your book. Word of mouth today could be somebody who is, uh, you know, having a number of clients and they want to buy a copy for every one of their clients. That could be word of mouth as well. Okay, Rhea's asking the question, can I make a private appointment? Yeah, Roddy will put the link in there and you can book an appointment with either. Thank you, Roddy. Uh, oh, and he was already answering it. He, see, Roddy's always ahead of the game. He's one step ahead of all of us, this guy. <laughs> He's amazing. And so you can use that link. Uh, Vladdy is very happy to take calls. She is our VP of sales in Dynamic Destiny. She loves serving people. She's an author. She knows you know, what it, what it takes for sure. And uh, Kayla is also available to take some calls as well. She is a uh, an author. She's an international best-selling author like Vladdy, and she's an award-winning author as well. So both of them have made themselves available. But one of the things that Roddy had said uh, at the beginning of the call, this is before we actually hit record, is if you book an appointment or when you book an appointment with Vladdy or Kayla, what we'd like you to do is show up, right? Both of them are moms. Both of them have made arrangements for their kids to be there with you, to dedicate the time to be with you. And it's just plain rude to not show up. <laughs> so might as well call it as I see it, right? So please, if you're going to book the appointment, we're, they're free. There's no charge. Show up. Okay, thank you. If you can't make it, no worries. We can, uh, you know, they, they're happy to, to reschedule as well. All right, I've just got a couple more slides and then I want to come back to the uh, to the um, PowerPoint presentation here. So 
what sub, what constitutes a bestseller? Now on Amazon, you could sell a handful of books, like a dozen books, and you could potentially become a best-selling author. It still is credible. But with New York Times, there's no particular number that is designated as when you sell this many books, you are a New York Times bestseller. And the reason is because all of the bestseller lists are designed that it is based on what else is selling. So New York Times, I would suggest set the objective to sell 10,000 copies in a week and you will possibly get on the New York Times bestseller list. All right. So that's what I suggest. I've I've done that for many, many, many clients. In fact, Bob used to call me the queen of the New York Times bestseller list because I helped many clients get on the New York Times bestseller list. And, you know, I, I uh, discovered that it's actually less than 1% of, I think it's 0.17. It's like 1% of 1% of authors get on the New York Times bestseller list. And so I know how to do it. I've done it myself. I've done it for my own book. I've done it for clients. I can help you as well, if that's what you would love. Now, the benefits, of course, is you get the book sales, which means you'll earn from that. The credibility is huge. Like I get to call myself a New York Times bestseller for the rest of my life. And the earnings potential, depending on if you're, let's say you've written a book, made it a New York Times bestseller, and you're somebody who teaches classes online, or you're a speaker, or you're a coach, you could potentially earn a lot more revenue because of that as well. And it could end up opening up other opportunities for media, you know, media appearances, it could open up other opportunities for other you know, career advancement, you just never know what it's going to do. It's done so many things for many, many, many of my clients as well. And also what it does for you, like your self-esteem and how good you feel accomplishing that, that as well. So the wonderful thing about all of this and the accomplishments that are possible for all authors is the only prerequisite is desire. Do you want it? And if you do, great. Well, we can show you the way for sure. And it sure is a lot easier to think uh, it's a lot easier than you think right now to write your book or your next book. And um, but I think it's important to understand how you can set yourself up for success before you even write your book, um, because if you are somebody who is an entrepreneur, there are certain things that you could do in your book that could really help elevate your career or help people understand who you are what you have a value and can encourage and inspire people to make a decision to potentially look look you up and work with you. Now, I've worked with thousands of authors over the years. I've been doing this work now for over 20 years. I've got uh, many, many clients that have accomplished tremendous things from uh, making their books bestsellers to generating millions of dollars in revenue from having their books made into movies to uh, having their books translated into multiple languages. And if you go to any of the links that Roddy is, is pasting for either the Epitome Author Program or the private mentoring uh, page, you will find that there's a number of them uh, listed on that page uh, that have really, really, and these are all authentic. I mean, many of them that just came in uh, from our clients. So you have to decide what you would love. And what I would love is you to be here with us tomorrow and Thursday for some time as well. And same thing with fiction, you can write fiction and nonfiction. How long does it take? It depends. Uh, I noticed there was a question there about uh, how I allocate my time. I write at all hours a day. How long it takes is really an individual thing. I can write pretty quick. Uh, what I know has definitely been beneficial, but I can show you how to do it fast as well. Could you get a book done in the next 10 days if you wanted to? Definitely, I can help you with that. Um, you could write it in two months if you want to, you know, either whatever you decide, or you could have it done next year. It really does de depend on what type of book you're writing. Children's books are obviously, depending on the age group of the children's book, can be faster. I have one client uh, that told me she wrote three children's books in a day. And she's from Australia, a lovely woman. And uh she said she heard me say that you could write a book in a day. And so she decided to do three of them, three children's books in one day. And so it really is the extra mile of success is what I find, you know, being an author, a best-selling author really separates you from the rest. Not that complicated to do it, but yeah, there are some steps. You know, Kayla had talked about that. Vladia talked about that before we even opened our meeting today. There are steps that are necessary to be followed. 
So if you want to work with me, if you've already decided, okay, I want Peggy to show me the way, whether it's through private mentoring or through the program that we have, well, I know how to get results and I can show you how. This is the work that I've been doing for decades. So you can either uh, book a call with uh, Vladdy, uh, she's ready to serve, or Kayla, or if you want to sign up for private mentoring, these spots are limited. I think there are two spots available now. They may not be available for long. I'm not even sure if they'll last the week, but if you want to take a look at that, you certainly can. Or you can join the Epitome Author Program, which does include six uh, calls to a month uh, with me in the Q&A call, but all the program is all delivered online. So you'll be able to find it there. Now, I know that was a little bit of a rapid fire kind of movement here. We are going to have another hour together tomorrow and another hour on Thursday, but we have five minutes and I want to address some questions. So the one question was asked, what's the best way to get started? How did you decide if it's a good idea? Good questions. I have an idea for my book, but I've no idea whether it's something people would want to read. How do I begin? Do you teach this? Definitely. I teach this. And so, you know, what's the best way to get started is make a committed decision. You're going to do it. Like you don't have to worry about the steps and how to get there. I'm going to guide you uh, that way. Vladdy actually talked about that before we got our call going today. Make a decision, a committed decision. You're going to do that. Now, how do you know if your idea is a good one or not? This is where you're going to invite in something that every one of you has. It's called common sense. If you think that this would be something that other people will want to read, you're probably right. Right. Like when I decided to write my first book, the reason why I wanted to write it is because I had studied many, many books on uh, personal development on the subject, and I found some of them were just too complicated. And I love to teach in simplistic ways and simplistic terms. So I decided to write a book called On Being the Creator of Your Destiny. And that was my very, very first book. So how did I know? I just assumed it would be a topic that people would really want to read. And it was. How do you market with the New York Times bestseller in mind? Very carefully and very strategically, Carrie. Um, I do teach this. It is something that you definitely want to, like I tell any author, you're going for bestseller, go for that one because it's a fun one. Um, building your personal uh, platform is part of it, of course. Uh, creating a plan uh, to accomplish it, following the steps that I teach in the Epitome Author Program important part of it. And it really is, it's like targeted marketing toward a particular period of time. You see, New York Times counts their book sales between Saturday and, and Saturday. So between one week. So if you can strategically plan to do a launch of your book and promote your book really strongly based on what I teach during that period, and you sell more than 10,000 copies, of books that are sold and delivered in the United States. And I'll talk about that because there's no more borders with the internet. You will be selling books all over the world. But if the majority of the English speaking world is in the United States, which they are, then your chances are really, really good if you if you put together a solid campaign. Okay, Barbara says, Peggy, would you say that when you block the time in your calendar to write the book, and you get in the zone. Do the words and stories seem to flow to you and through you? Yeah, absolutely, Barbara. Um, that's exactly what I do. I just, you know, like earlier when we we're getting ready for this call, what I do with, with any of my calls, even when I'm working with my clients, is I get into the spirit of what I'm about to do. And I just enter into the spirit and I just talk to the universe and say, and say, you know, speak through me. Allow my, you know, fingers on the keyboard to be your voice. And that's what I'm doing with the moment of creation. It's like, because I've made the decision, this will be my best book ever, then I have to get into the spirit of that and just energetically write. So I write when I'm feeling good. And if I'm not feeling good, then I'll make myself feel good. <laughs> like get energetic. Like, I, like if you guys know me, or maybe you're new to me, I'm a high energy person. I got a lot of energy. I'm 65 years old, almost 66, but I am bundled with energy. And so I calm my energy down, but I keep the spirit high and then allow it to flow. That's what I do. It's kind of like my process. It doesn't take a long period of time. It could take like a minute and boom, I put my butt in my chair and away I go. And I have fun. You got to have fun with this. It's really important to be enjoying the process. Okay. Two more questions and we'll call it a wrap for today. I have 35 star reviews. Wow, Victoria, that's Fantastic. Won an international book award honor, but how long do you market your book after it's published? A year or more? Forever, baby. Forever. You can continue to. That's a wonderful thing about books. Like they just don't, you know, um, 
die out like they're time usually they're timeless although i did mention that this book is an internet marketing book so probably not as you know not as uh, legit as it is today because i think i wrote this before social media was there and wrote it before ai and and so yeah keep marketing and that's one of the fun things and that's something else if any of you have released your book and you released it five years ago seven years ago 10 years ago and you want now to make it a bestseller you could totally do that you could totally do that Okay, so Tammy says, what is the preferred self-publishing or using a publisher? I would say the preferred method today is self-publish, even though I just sold the rights to two of my books to a publisher. But I did that for a reason. I want to show you that you still can, right? But publishers are, you know, they're in a unique position now because people can self-publish. You're going to earn more when you self-publish your book. Uh, anyways, you likely earn more from that. And you're the one that needs to do the marketing. Okay, are you guys okay with me going a little over time? It's three o'clock now, but I see three more questions just came in. Are you okay with that? Okay, good. All right, let's keep going then. Um, G is asking the question, how did you come up with the price for your coaching programs? Why can't you offer it for everyone who can afford it? All right, great question. You know, it's really based on, you know, pricing anything. You know, anybody that prices anything, it's based on what do you feel it's worth exponentially, and then you water it down. Look, I want you to understand something. I have personally earned millions of dollars doing what I teach to others. Is it worth the investment to learn that, you know, based on what the prices are? Of course, this is like a duh. Of course it is. Would I have paid somebody when I first became an author to teach me what I'm now teaching people? Definitely. In fact, I have invested in myself for decades, decades and decades and decades that has returned to me in my life exponential, exponential results. So that's the way it's based on. I think it's like the bargain of the century. I really do. And it's not a matter of if you can afford it or not. If you think you can't, that's a mindset challenge. That's what that, it's not a lack of money challenge. It's a mindset challenge. We live in a prosperous universe where there are abundances everywhere. You will attract the money when you make a committed decision to do it. I see Vladdy nodding her head there. Vladdy, you want to come in and talk about that? This is one of your wonderful areas of expertise in uh, like talking about this, right, Vladdy? Yeah, I love decision making. <laughs> yes, you do. It's, I think it's the best really skills you can learn because you make the decisions as the person who you would love to be. So you have to think of the end. And if you can make a decision right now, as if you are the person who you would love to be, then that's where you roll in the high energy and it will happen. It's the connection to it and it's the committed decision. So what does it mean? It's something happens in your cells and the brain gives the energy and a signal. There's a whole science behind it and we don't really have a time for it. But it is when you feel that because it's the right one, it's the one you're in the love with the decision. So really... What Peggy really helped me with was, you know, like write the when you have the goal, is that the right goal? Do you have your why? And you must be in love with it. If you don't, then you give up probably too fast because procrastination kicks in. When you have the right goal and you would love to do it and you make the committed decision to be an author and just step towards it, everything will happen. You will attract the people, the time, the energy, the everything, money, whatever you need will come towards you because you attract it. So Absolutely. making the first decision is make it as the person which is your avatar, the person you'd love to be. Yeah. You know, and, and I love that, Vlada, you shared that because I know for you, you know, when you first were getting into this, um, I mean, you were personally feeling stretched. Mm -hmm. You know, financially <laughs> and didn't necessarily have the support at home, which, you know, can be a challenge sometimes with people. And and I understand that. I remember when I went to Bob Proctor's first seminar in January 79 and he offered a program for eight hundred dollars. I mean, it might have might as well have been 80 million dollars at the time. I didn't have it. And I was like, OK, you know, and Bob used to teach like, do you want it? You know, do that's the question you ask yourself. Do I want it? And, you know, we teach about results. I don't do it for you. But you know, one of the things that I love, Vladdy, I'm sure you do too, is when we look at the right-hand column, Michelle Snyder wrote, invaluable, it's priceless. 
um, Mark Wallace, the coaching programs are worth every penny and Peggy over delivers. Jackie, who's been, these are all clients of ours, graduates of ours. Jackie, the price is not the most in part. It's the value you receive and Peggy always over delivers. And, uh, you know, like this is really what's important. I didn't ask anyone to make any comments. I didn't ask AD to come on, didn't ask Mark to make that comment. A lot of what we do sometimes is spontaneous because we, we're authentic. We're real here at Dynamic Destiny. We're not going to blow smoke up people's bum bums or anything like that. We just keep our very real here. And uh, yeah. Oh, thank you, Kim. Kim said, I remember going to Ottawa for a live workshop and it was life changing for me. But it really isn't up to us. You know, it's up to you. And that's what we love about working with our clients is that They've made the decision, like 80, made the decision to step up. I look up Marielle with her book. She made the decision to step up. She did it. She wrote it. She got it done. She brought it out to the world, right? Type in the chat box, Marielle. Tell everybody what the name of your book is. I'll do a little plug for you right here. And, you know, when we think about that, you know, that's really what it takes. It just takes the decision that you're going to do it as Vladdy talks about a committed decision. And you're going to figure out the way. And even if. You know, even if as you're going along, it's not quite, you know, the results that you want. Keep going. Just keep going and keep going and keep going because you may discover something. Like I know that there's, there's uh, you know, sometimes that some of our clients will come back, like a radio uh, test to this, that we see people that will come online and they'll say, you know, I signed up for the author program, but I, I you know, haven't looked at it for a couple of years. Can I go back in? Yeah, sure. I go back in if the program's still there. And as long as we haven't changed platforms, which we haven't for about eight years now, <laughs> it's likely still there. And they go in there and they discover something that, you know, was always there, but they might not have been ready for maybe mentally or emotionally. And and then they decide to uh, to act on it. So I really appreciate you, Vladdy. Thank you so much for uh, for jumping in and, and stepping in. Um, while I answer the last few questions, um, actually, let me let me get to those right now. Roddy's probably slipped a few more in there for me. Did you, Roddy? No, he didn't. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, I love that. Okay, uh, Munsa says, I always feel attracted to write a book, but I thought it was not possible for me since I discovered I uh, inter, um, like chat GPT, I'm guessing, uh, AI, he wrote IA or, but it's AI. Uh, I'm writing my book first with AI and I love it, but I don't feel myself as an author. I feel more like ideas, uh, creator. Is it okay? Really great question. Really, really great question. Thank you, Tanya. Right back at you. Okay. So I want to talk just a moment about AI. If you guys uh, are open to it, uh, here's a book that I used AI to create. And now if you notice on the bottom of this book, it says co-author Ava. Now this is a book that when AI first came out, like ChatGPT, which I think was, was it a year ago or two? I can't even remember now. It seems to, <laughs> seems to all blend in together. I Was it last year? Actually, let me look at the uh, release date on the book. Yes, it was last year. So when, when AI started to become available in the world. And I'm in love with technology. I absolutely love technology. And, and I'm, I'm so keen on it. In fact, yesterday I was, my grandson was here and I was, uh, and his friend was over and he was showing, his friend was showing me how to make songs with AI. Now this is really cool guys. Sidebar note here, if you don't mind, because <laughs> this is fun. There is an AI site. I think it's called Suno, 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 I think is what it's called. And you can go in there and you can put in like something like um, the name of a person, what message you want to write to them in a song and say the kind of song, like the type of song, country, pop, hip hop, you know, that kind of thing. And boom, it can do a, a song like that. And so my husband's birthday is next week. He's 65. And so I went on this site and I just typed in, you know, happy birthday, Denny, and it, and just a couple of comments and it wrote a song and it was, and I was playing it for him in a matter of minutes. That's pretty cool. That's an AI, it's an AI application. So when AI first came out, chat GPT first came out, I wanted to play with it and see what you can do with it and how you can work with it as an author. And so I ended up having it write this book. So this book is written very uniquely. The front part is fiction and the back part is nonfiction. But AI pretty much wrote it based on my guidance. Now, that is a book that I cannot copyright. 
I cannot copyright this book. I can't protect it. Yes, I can release it. Yes, my name's on it, but I cannot copyright protect it. Okay, that's the difference. If you have AI write your book, then you can't copyright protect it. But let's say you wrote a book and you have AI edit, edit your book. That's your book. That's your content. You can totally copyright protect it. It's all yours. There's no reason why you can't release that book and have your name on there. So, so that's a little bit of the difference. But as I said, I added several classes to our Epitome Author Program on how to use AI as an author. Okay, is that it, Roddy? Do I have one more? One more? Do you recommend blocking a certain amount of time each day, a certain number of pages or word count as a daily goal? Do you find Julia Cameron's methods are helpful? Yeah, I haven't used Julia Cameron's methods. I looked at them back in like 2002, maybe, or three. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. And um, uh, yeah, I'll answer that question. Then we'll call it a wrap. Anyways, um, I usually, what I'll do is I'll, I'll block off time to write and set in my mind what the goal is, like number of words as an example. And at the beginning of the week, I set an accomplishment for that week. So this week, my accomplishment is that I'm writing, you know, this many words, or I'll set it for the month that I've written 10,000 words or something like that. So yes, I set words and I allocate the time. And then the final question is, what about images? Now, if you guys saw my PowerPoint presentation today, which I'm going to bring back up here, all of the, uh, not all, but many of these images were created with uh, AI. Not that one. That, that one was, you know, part of the uh, PowerPoint function. This one was AI. That one was AI. That one was AI. This was AI. AI, 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 and these are all AI and including the very first one. So all of the images that I use for my, or almost all of the images that I use for my PowerPoint presentation, I went into chat GPT and I said, create an image for the author world. Boom, out comes an image. And you know, AI has saved and it can save you truckloads of money, truckloads of money and truckloads of time. That's one of the reasons why I'm in love with it. Absolutely in love with it. I used to be members. Uh, I'd have memberships with different image sites where you pay for the images to use in your PowerPoint, which is what you should do legally. And so I would do that, but not anymore. Not with AI. I canceled those memberships. I don't have to use them anymore. I just go to AI. Now, if you want an image without words, just tell it. I don't want images with words. If it pumps out an image that doesn't work for you, ask it again and ask it again and ask it again. So that's one of the blessings. There's like, it never says, okay, you've already asked for five images. Like you're at your quota. It doesn't do that. You can, you can, uh, can you use them in a book? Good question. Can you use the images in a book? Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to AI and ask. I'm going to ask it if you can use it in a book. So can I use the images you create in my book? Let's see what it says. Yes, you can use the images that, AI creates in your book. Since the images are generated uniquely for you, there's no copyright restrictions. Feel free to use them for any personal or commercial project, including books, websites, or marketing materials. You know, there's another advantage right there, because if you are using like iStock Photo or some of those other sites that sell images, you you when you're accessing the images or using the images, sometimes it'll say restricted use. I remember when I was looking for a bulldog for my book, uh, Be a Dog with a Bone. Now, this book I wrote in 2002. So 22 years ago, I wrote this book and I wanted a bulldog on the cover that was holding a, a bone. And so I looked for a bulldog image to use and my web designer was helping me and he found one. And he told me, he said that... Um, the bulldog could only be used for this many book sales. And it's like, you don't want that. You don't want to limit the number of book sales that you can use an image for. So uh, I said to my, uh, my designer, I said, I'm going to find a bulldog and take the picture myself. And that's what I did. This is Charlie. He's a championship bulldog. He's probably not alive anymore because that was 2002. I took the photo of him, but I went to the dog show 
And he was the champion there. And I took his photo and I asked his mother or mother owner, Elizabeth, if I could have the rights to use this photo on my book for however many copies are going to be sold in the world. And she said, yes, she was delighted to have Charlie on the cover of my book. So that's where that image came from. Okay, guys, come back tomorrow. We're going to talk about the money earning side of being an author, the many ways that you can generate uh, endless amounts of money as an author. So make sure you come back tomorrow, two o'clock. Thank you, Kim. Yes, yeah, same Zoom link. Yes, thank you, Roddy. Appreciate that. And you're very welcome. Oh, good to see you here, Gareth. I didn't know that you're on the call. That's wonderful. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow afternoon or whatever time of day it is uh, for you at two o'clock. You're very welcome. So glad that you guys were here today. Appreciate you. Thank you, Roddy. Thank you, Vladdy. Appreciate you. Thank you, Kayla. And 80, thank you for being spontaneous and, <laughs> and jumping in on the call as well. Very kind of you. All right. Thanks, everyone. See you tomorrow.